God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Sunday. For truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. Today, we will be covering part three of our message series titled, Come Out of Sodom. Our scripture will be from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, and verse 32, which reads as follows. Keep in mind Lot's wife. My beloved, as you know from parts one and two, Lot's wife looked back at Sodom, which means she looked back at sin and filthiness and all the other things that Sodom had to offer. And therefore, she was turned into a pillar of salt. Today, we will go into the application of the doctrine of this message. But before we do that, let us open up in a word of prayer. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to minister in your name, Lord, before this congregation and those that will be viewing the video and listening to the audio. Thank you for the privilege of standing here today. Anoint me, Father God, with your Holy Spirit, and we praise you, Father God, for giving me the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that I need to present part three of this message series titled, Come Out of Sodom. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Beloved, in the doctrine of the wrath and judgment of God that I presented to you in this message series thus far, it is to warn those who are walking and living in a natural condition, which means living and desiring the things of the flesh or the things of the world instead of the things of of God. If you are in this condition, I warn you to flee out of it and by no means look back as Lot's wife did. While you are out of Christ, you are in Sodom and are subject to the wrath of God. The whole history of the destruction of Sodom with all its circumstances seems to be inserted in the scriptures for our warning and is sent forth as an example as Jude says in his epistle in Jude chapter 1 and verse 7 which reads, Remember Sodom and Gomorrah and the nearby towns whose people acted as those angels did and indulged in sexual immorality and perversion. They suffer the punishment of eternal fire as a plain warning to all. It, in a lively manner, typifies the case of natural men, the destruction of those that continue in a natural state, and the manner of those who escape to flee to Christ. Psalm chapter 11 and verse 6 says, He rains down fire and burning sulfur upon the wicked people. He makes them drink from a cup filled with scorching wind. Beloved, this depicts the appointed punishment and horrible tempest directed upon all who do not repent and turn from their evil ways. My beloved, consider what the state is that you are to get out of. You that are seeking an interest in Christ, you are to flee out of Sodom. Sodom is the place of your birth and the place where you have spent your life since birth. You are citizens of that city, which is full of filthiness and abomination before God, and it is polluted and accursed. You belong to that impure society, and not only live among them, but you are of them. You are part of those who have committed those abominations and have so provoked God as you have heard in this message series so far. It is you that I have in mind while I have been speaking about this doctrine of punishment, for you are the inhabitants of Sodom. Awake, awake, my beloved, and look around you and look at the filthiness and the punishment that awaits all those that reject Jesus Christ. The world of mankind is divided into two categories, or as I may say, into two cities. There is the city of Zion, the church of God, the holy and beloved city, and there is Sodom, that polluted and accursed city which is appointed to destruction. Without Christ, you belong to the latter one of these, which is Sodom. How much soever you may look upon yourselves better than some others, yet you are of the same city, the same company with fornicators, drunkards, adulterers, common swearers, highwaymen, pirates, and sodomites. How much soever you may think yourselves distinguished, as long as you are out of Christ, which means without salvation, you belong to the very same society. You are of the same company. You join with them and are not better than they are. You are considered in the sight of God as fit to be ranked with them. You and they are altogether the subjects of the loathing and abhorrence of God and have the wrath of God abiding on you, and you will go with them 
and be destroyed with them if you do not escape from your present state of sinfulness. Yes, you are the same society and the same company with devils, demons. For Sodom is not only the city of the wicked men and women of this present world, but it is the home of every evil spirit. Knowing that you belong to that city that is appointed to an awful, inevitable, universal, swift and sudden destruction, which has a storm of fire and wrath hanging over it, are you going to flee and not look back? Many of you are convinced of the awful state you are in while in Sodom and are making some attempts to escape from the wrath which hangs over it. If you are one who is convinced, be warned by what has been said so far in this message series to escape for your lives and not to look back. Look not back unless you choose to have part in the burning tempest that is coming down on that city. Don't look back in remembrance of the enjoyment which you have had in Sodom as hankering after the pleasant things which you have had there, after the ease, the security, and the pleasure which you have enjoyed. Beloved, never forget Lot's wife, for she looked back as being hesitant, utterly and forever, to leave the ease, the pleasure, and plenty which she enjoyed in Sodom, and as having a mind to return to them again. Remember what became of her. Also, never forget the children of Israel in the wilderness, who were desirous of going back again into Egypt, because they remembered the abundance of Egypt. Numbers chapter 11 and verse 5 says, Remember all the free fish we ate in Egypt and the cucumbers and watermelons, leeks, onions, and garlic we had? Remember what was the issue of their desires? You must be willing to forever leave all the ease, pleasure, profit, and sinfulness for salvation through Jesus Christ. As Lot forsook all and left all he had to escape out of Sodom to have the salvation through Jesus Christ, you must also do the same. I am going to give you eight final warnings from this message series. One, the destruction of which you are in danger is infinitely more dreadful than that destruction of the literal Sodom from which Lot fled. The destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah in a storm of fire and brimstone was but a shadow of the destruction of ungodly men in hell, and is no more to it than a shadow of the destruction that they will face. It is only a picture, but this picture is to become a reality and a real fire. The misery of hell is set forth by various shadows and images in Holy Scripture as blackness of darkness, a never-dying worm, a furnace of fire, a lake of fire and brimstone, the torments of the valley of Hinnom, a storm of fire and brimstone. The reason why so many similitudes are made use of is because none of them are sufficient. Anyone does but partly and very imperfectly represent the truth and therefore God makes use of many. Beloved, you have therefore much more need to make haste in your escape and not to look behind you than Lot and his wife had when they fled of Sodom. For you are every day and every moment in danger of a thousand times more, more of a dreadful storm coming on your heads than that which came on Sodom when the Lord rained brimstone and fire out of heaven upon them so that it will be vastly more foolish if you look back than it was in Lot's wife. Two, the destruction you are in danger of is not only greater than the temporal destruction of Sodom, but greater than the eternal destruction of the inhabitants of Sodom. For however well you may think you have behaved yourselves, you have continued impenitent under the glorious gospel, have sinned more and provoked God far more, and have greater guilt upon you than the inhabitants of Sodom. Although you may seem to yourselves and perhaps to others to be very harmless creatures, listen to what Matthew chapter 10 and verse 15 says, I can guarantee this truth. Judgment Day will be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than for that city. Three, multitudes, while they have been looking back, have been suddenly overtaken and seized by the storm of wrath. The wrath of God is not delayed while they delayed. It has not waited at all for them to repent, to turn about and flee, but has presently seized them, and they have been past hope. When Lot's wife looked back, she was immediately destroyed. God has exercised patience toward her before. When she lingered at the setting out, the angels pressed her, her husband and children, to make haste. Not only so, but when they yet delayed, they laid hold of her hands and brought her forth and set her outside the city. For the Lord was merciful to her, but then not with 
notwithstanding this mercy and the warnings which had been given to her, she looked back. God exercised no more patience towards her, but proceeded in wrath immediately to put her to death. Now, my beloved, God has in the same manner been merciful to you. You in time past have been lingering. You have been warned by the angel of your danger and pressed to make haste and flee, but you have delayed. Now, at length, God has, as it were, laid hold of you by the conviction of his Holy Spirit to draw you out of Sodom. So remember Lot's wife. If now, after all, you should look back when God has been merciful to you, you will have reason to fear that God will suddenly destroy you and wait no longer for you. My beloved, multitudes, when they have been looking back and rejecting another opportunity, have never had another opportunity and have been suddenly destroyed and that without remedy. For if you look back and live long after it, there will be great danger that you will never get any farther. The only way to seek salvation through Jesus Christ is to press forward with all your might and still to look and press forward. Never stand still or slow your pace. When Lot's wife stopped in her flight from Sodom and stood still in order that she might look, her punishment was that there at that spot she was to stand forever. Where she never got beyond that place, but there she stood as a pillar of salt, a durable pillar and monument of God's wrath for her folly and her wickedness. Beloved, so it is very often is the backsliders, though they may live a considerable time after. When they look back after they have been taking pains for the salvation, they lose all and put themselves under great disadvantages by quenching the spirit of God and losing their convictions. They dreadfully harden their own hearts and deaden their souls, make way for temptation, and dreadfully strengthen and establish sin in their hearts. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 43, 44, and 45 says, When an evil spirit comes out of a person, it goes through dry places looking for a place to rest, but it doesn't find any. Then it says, I'll go back to the home I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean, and in order. Then it goes and brings along seven other more evil than itself. They enter and take up permanent residence there. In the end, the condition of that person is worse than it was before. That is what will happen to the evil people of this day. Beloved, experience confirms that none ordinarily are so hard to be brought back to repentance as backsliders. 5. It may well stir you up to flee for your lives and not look behind you when you consider how many have fled to the mountain while you still stay in Sodom. To what multitudes has God given the wisdom to flee to Christ, the mountain of safety? They have fled to the little city of Zoar, which God will spare and never destroy. They are in a sage condition and are out of reach of the storm. The fire and the brimstone can do them no harm there. Still you remain in that cursed city among that accursed company of people. You are yet in Sodom, which God is about so terribly to destroy, and you are in danger of having snares, fire, and brimstone come down on your head. Though many have attained deliverance, yet you have not. Good has come, but you have seen none of it. Many others are happy, but none knows what will become of you. You have no part nor fortune in the glorious salvation of souls. The consideration of this should stir you up effectually to escape and in your escape to press forward, still to press forward and to resolve to press forward forever, no matter what tries to slow you down. Beloved, resolve to listen to no temptation and never look back or in any way slacken or loosen your endeavors as long as you live, but if possible, to increase them more and more. 6. Backsliding after such a time as this will have a vastly greater tendency to seal a man's damnation than at another time. The greater means men have the latter cause and the greater advantages they are under means the more dangerous is backsliding and the more it has a tendency to enhance guilt, to provoke God, and to harden the heart. We, in this land of light, have long enjoyed greater advantages than most of the world, and backsliding will be proportionately the greater sin and the more dangerous of the soul. If therefore you look back, there will be great danger that God will swear in his wrath that you shall never enter into his rest. And he swore concerning them that were going back into Egypt after they had seen 
the wonders which he brought for Israel. Numbers chapter 14 verses 22 and 23 says, Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they will not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. Number seven, we know not but that a great part of the wicked world is at this present day in Sodom's circumstances when Lot fled out of it, having some outward temporal destruction hanging over it. It seems as if some great thing were coming due to the state of things in the world today. It seems to be right for some great revolution. The world has gotten to such a terrible degree of wickedness that it is probable the cry of it has, but this time, reached up to heaven. And it is highly probable that God will not allow things to go on much longer. It is likely that God will soon appear in awful majesty to vindicate his own cause, and then none will be safe that are out of Christ. Now therefore, everyone should flee for their life and escape to the mountain before they are consumed. We cannot certainly tell what God is about to do, but this we may know, that those who are out of Christ are in a most unsafe place. Place. 8. To enforce this warning against looking back, allow me to exhort you to consider the exceeding proneness which there is in the heart to it. The heart of man is a backsliding heart. There is in the heart a great love and hankering desire after the ease, pleasure, and enjoyments of Sodom, as there was in Lot's wife, by which persons are continually liable to temptations to look back. The heart is so much towards Sodom that it is a difficult thing to keep the eye from turning that way, and the feet from going there. When men under convictions are put upon fleeing it is by mere force, and it is because God lays hold of their hands, as he did on Lot and his wife and drags them so far. The tendency of the heart is to go back to Sodom once again. People are very prone to backsliding, also through discouragement. They are apt to be discouraged. Their heart is unsteady, soon tired, soon gives out, is apt to listen to discouraging temptations. Discouragement tends to backsliding, and it weakens a person's hands, lies as a dead weight on their hearts, and makes them drag heavily. And if it continues long enough, it very often produces senselessness. Convictions are often shaken off that way, and they begin to first go off with discouragement. Backsliding is a disease that is exceeding secret in its way of working. It is a flattering distemper. It works like a consumption wherein persons often flatter themselves that they are not worse, but something is better and in a hopeful way to recover until a few days before they die. So backsliding commonly comes on gradually as they still flatter themselves that they are not backslidden. They believe that they are still seeking yet and they hope they have not lost their convictions. So they blind themselves, my beloved, and keep themselves insensible of their own disease and so are not terrified with it nor awaken to use means for relief until it is past cure. Therefore, my beloved, it is that backsliding commonly comes upon persons that have for some time been under any considerable convictions and afterwards lose them. Let the consideration of this danger excite you to the greatest care and diligence to keep your hearts and to watchfulness and constant prayer against backsliding. Let it put you upon endeavors to strengthen your resolutions of guarding against everything that tends to the contrary, that you may indeed hold out to the end. For then shall you know, if you follow on, to know the Lord Jesus Christ. In closing, I would like to read to you Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26. What good will it do for people to win the whole world and lose their lives. Well, what will a person give in exchange for life? Please answer this question in a personal way. And with that, I would like to say, if you have never received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, I want to pray with you today. If this message has touched you in any way, if you are in a backslidden condition, if you are continually looking back to Sodom, which is the sinfulness and filthiness of this world, please consider receiving Christ as your Savior and Lord. Why? You still have time. Jesus Christ is calling you today through this message series. If you have never received him as your Savior and Lord, please repent today and ask him 
to be your Savior, for there is no other way to get to heaven than through Jesus Christ. Why don't you pray this prayer with me? Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today come out of Sodom, and I have been in Sodom, but listening to this message series, I have realized that being in Sodom is going to bring me destruction and will finally send me to hell, and I don't want to go there. Therefore, I am repenting of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven, and is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father in the place of all power and all majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe this today. I confess this today, and I believe that through my repentance and confession of faith in Jesus Christ, that I have become a Christian. And when I leave this life, I will go to be with Jesus Christ forever and not have to suffer the destruction of those that refuse Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. Thank you for saving me today, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. My beloved, if you said that prayer and truly meant it from your heart, allow me to be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now, what I would like you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, one that preaches the fullness of the Bible, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, adding nothing and taking nothing from it. Get an audience with a pastor or one of his elders. Tell him what happened. Ask him to pray with you, to pray for you, to anoint you with oil, and to baptize you in water by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask him to mentor you and to give you a Bible if you haven't one. Then what I would like you to do is contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. You can also contact me through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net. Thank you for being with us today. This concludes our message series title, Come Out of Sodom from Luke chapter 17 and verse 32. I have presented this message series in three parts. Please listen to all three of them. God bless you, my beloved, and go with God.